service command these days. Let's remember, there are 68,000 American men and women serving in Afghanistan tonight and every day for 11 years. They and thousands before them have done us proud. More than 2,000 laying down their lives for us. Jake Tapper remembers. On the day Jake's son was born, our White House correspondent heard the story of other American sons at one far off outpost in one terrible battle. And so Jake set out on a three year quest to bring us their story from the northeast reaches of Afghanistan. What's up, dude? Not a damn thing. For years, the troops stationed at Combat Outpost Keating feared they were sitting ducks. Located at the bottom of three steep mountains just 14 miles from the Pakistan border. And when the Taliban attack finally did happen in October 2009, seen here in this terrifying video posted months later, the 53 U.S. troops there were horribly outnumbered by up to 400 enemy fighters. We were alone, isolated, air support was too far away. That location, it was indefensible. So why was that doomed outpost put there? Why would the U.S. military leave them so open to attack? Captain Ross Burkhoff was an intelligence officer and one of the first soldiers assigned to Keating in 2006. We knew that there were some weapons and fighters and supplies moving across the border. We knew we had to stem that flow. But uh, who was there? Were they, were they Al-Qaeda? Were they Taliban? We had mixed reports. The outpost was placed near the road to monitor insurgent activity to be accessible to resupply since most of the helicopters were in Iraq and to be close to local villages. Captain Matt Gooding, the first long-term commander at Cop Keating, says winning over locals was initially a near impossible feat. Did they want you there? 90% did not want us there. 10% did. Do they, you think they knew who was trying to kill you? Absolutely. When you, were, you do. Absolutely. But in those early days, it was the terrain that would pose the toughest challenge. In November 2006, that road they were trying to improve and protect claimed the life of First Lieutenant Ben Keating, for whom the outpost was later named when his truck overturned. Soon enough, troops stopped using that road for resupply, even though that was one of the main reasons the outpost had been put there. The U.S. in that valley had successes and failures, but by May 2009, security there had completely deteriorated. Captain Christopher Cordova was the top medical man for the last unit deployed to the outpost. They came in in the dead of night. When the sun rose and you left your hooch, what, what did you think when you looked around at the cop? Hard to believe that we were stationed in such an indefensible position. Why are we at the bottom of all of this terrain? On October 3rd, the attack that everyone knew would someday come... ...finally did. Allahu Akbar. Specialist Zach Kappas was in a guard post returning fire for hours on end. It was clear that this battle was like nothing they'd ever experienced. This was something I never heard before. The enemy was brilliant. I hate to say that, but they were. Mortarman Kevin Thompson ran out to return fire and was immediately killed. He was the first of eight who would die that day, all of them killed in acts of bravery. Josh Kirk was firing at the hills when he was killed. Michael Scusa running into danger to deliver ammo. Josh Hart and Chris Griffin were trying to help troops pinned down in a Humvee. Justin Gallegos, Vernon Martin, and Stephen Mace were also killed trying to help their fellow troops. If I wasn't where I was, could I have done what those men did? And I don't think I could have. Allah Akbar. At one point, insurgents Allah infiltrated the camp. But with courage and air support, the men of combat outpost Keating beat the enemy back. Within days, the U.S. abandoned the base and bombed it back to dust. The Pentagon later did its own investigation and admitted that at the time there was no tactical or strategic purpose for the outpost. At the end of the day, was it worth it, do you think, Combat Outpost Keating, being there? I don't want to say it wasn't worth it because I feel like it takes away from what we did. It's a complicated answer. I, I hate to say that we occupied that area for three years and didn't accomplish nothing. That, I hate to say that. I hate to even think that. It's a question that gnaws at many of the survivors of the outpost and those who loved the ones who did not survive. For Nightline, this is Jake Tapper in Washington. The Heroes, thanks to Jake, his book, The Outpost, in stores now.